Greetings, my wavy sisters. How have you been? Um, I am coming to you today with a video on something I think is really important. This was actually a suggestion from a follower of mine. I see the same mistakes happening over and over again when it comes to wavy girls starting the curly girl method or wavy girls just embracing their, their natural hair texture. I see these five mistakes over and over and over again. So um, I'm filming this video today because I'm having a less than stellar hair day because I broke one of my own rules. So let me tell you about that uh, when we get to it. I have just published an article uh, via Naturally Curly on this subject. So you may have read it already. If you haven't, I'll be sure to link it down below so you can check it out. But I wanted to talk about it on my YouTube channel as well because it's always a good place for me to elaborate a little bit more and also to answer questions directly that you guys might have for me. So I see these five mistakes all the time. The absolute number one mistake I see Wavy's making is not clarifying. So you go from almost a lifetime of using these sulfate heavy shampoos, silicone heavy conditioners, and suddenly doing a final wash with that to get the silicones off and then moving to sulfate free shampoos or maybe co-washing, we'll talk about that in a minute, and using silicone free conditioners, gel, cream, curl enhancers, custards, I mean oils, you name it. Suddenly. We're using all these products on our hair, we're applying them on wet hair, and we think that we're not going to get buildup. Buildup happens quickly on a wavy. It has to do with, I think a lot of all of these mistakes have to do with the fact that the sebum from, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but the sebum from our scalp is, is a precious resource and we don't want to strip it all away every single day. We definitely don't. But because we have fewer whirls and curls in the place for that sebum to reach the lengths of our hair, our hair is naturally more moisturized than our curly sisters. So if we're applying lots of products on top of naturally somewhat moisturized hair, we're going to end up with buildup. It's inevitable. So I would urge you to clarify regularly. For me, I'm on a schedule, it's on my calendar every three weeks. And I, if I skip that clarifying session, Man, it's the wrong decision. And build up frizz is how I know. I will wash my hair, I'll do everything I did the wash day before that, before that, before that, before that, before that, before that, before that. And that day will be a horrible, nasty, gunky hair day. I, it's disgusting. And it's just that it was too much. It finally built up and it, it's gotta go. Of course, frizz has a lot of causes, but build up is definitely probably the number one thing that I see on Instagram or on Facebook when people reach out to me asking for help and they send me pictures of their hair and they're like, my hair is so frizzy, what can I, what can I do about this? And I'm like, you have build up. <laughs> That's build up right there, right there. It's build up. It is, it's totally build up. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo. This big mama. I love this, I've talked about this in other, other videos. I love this one too. This is the Trader Joe's Spa Nourish Shampoo. These two are great. They feature sodium laureth sulfate as the second ingredient and sodium C14-16 olefin sulfonate as the third ingredient in this one. So these are going to remove, um, these. so those surfactants are going to remove even what would be considered curly girl friendly ingredients that cling tightly to our hair, um, like pahentrimonium methosulfate is a conditioning agent. That's a really hard one to get off. Um, there are also polyquaternium ingredients that cling tightly to our hair and are very hard to remove. These are going to do that for you. Now, if you opt to go with a kinky curly come clean, which I can't show you because I don't have it because I don't think it's very good. Um, it's got, I think, uh, sodium C14-16 olefin sulfonate, like maybe midway down on the ingredients list. For me, that's not gonna cut it. I know that um, some curly girls, and I've got a couple wavy curly girlfriends that opt to use something like this, and then the kinky curly come clean, like every other clarifying session, it's just not enough for me. I prefer to just use the same stuff every single time to keep things consistent. But then of course, you have to follow up with a deep conditioning treatment, so we'll talk about that next. All right, but before I dive into deep conditioning, I want to talk about co-washing. If you have read the Curly Girl Handbook by Lorraine Massey and you are ready to jump both feet into Curly Girl, maybe giving up shampoo like she suggests as a probably type 
3B, 3C curly girl isn't the best idea for a type 2B wavy girl like myself. Um, exclusively co-washing would be an awful idea for me. Um, that there's just that it's it doesn't have the surfactants to remove the buildup you're going to experience you're going to experience build up faster you're going to have oily roots faster some wavy girls prefer to never co-wash at all i personally especially in the summertime when it's super super humid here in the dallas area like to co-wash because it preserves much more moisture in my hair when it's especially especially scorching outside i personally do best on a schedule of co-wash co-wash low poo co-wash, co-wash, low poo, and I stay on that schedule until I need to clarify. So that really works the best for me, and I typically wash my hair every two to three wash days, um, just depending on how things are looking. And of course, my favorite co-wash continues to be the As I Am Coconut Co-wash. I just adore this stuff. It is just, it's more cleansing. I think, and it just smells so good. Look at that stalactite in there, that's funny. Anyway, I find it to be much more cleansing than like a regular thin, suave, you know, thin conditioner, whatever, tropical coconut, whatever it is that people like to use. This has got cetrimonium chloride as the third ingredient, third ingredient, which is a very mild surfactant, so it's gonna leave your hair with a little bit of squeak at the roots, but still the um, hydrogenated castor oil in it, my hair just loves. That can build up onto itself though. So like when you use a co-wash, you're always running the risk of over moisturizing your hair, but it's still one I would say that you can try. Sally's has the best price on this one. Okay, so now let's talk about deep conditioning. Okay, so after you've been co-washing for maybe a month, every other wash, every third wash, something like that, and you've been using your low poo, you've got some buildup, you finally get that off, you have to follow that up with a deep condition. You can't just put like a deep conditioner on your hair or a regular conditioner and leave it for five minutes and expect that you're gonna have soft, bouncy, manageable hair. You're gonna have mad hair. So if you don't want mad hair, you've gotta use a deep condition. Obviously I'm giving myself away holding these two. I love these. Okay, so these are my favorite products, but you don't have to use a labeled deep conditioner. It doesn't have to be expensive. The two major keys to deep conditioning are time and quality. In terms of time, 30 minutes is the number that I keep in mind. If you guys are not following Wendy, who is the creator of the Sciency Hair Blog, I'll put the link below to her website, you should. She's great, she's got all kinds of wonderful knowledge and one of the things she talks about on her website, she has a two part post on deep conditioning and she talks about time and she talks about how you can make any conditioner a deep conditioner which is basically adding oil to any conditioner. You can add it to a deep conditioner as well, but if you happen to have like Sally's Generic Value Products Conditioning Balm, that GVPCB that everybody likes, you can add uh, a tablespoon of olive oil to that and a tablespoon of honey and you've got yourself one kick in deep conditioner. That's good stuff right there. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you do need to leave it on for 30 minutes. Um, one of the things Wendy talks about on her blog is leaving a deep conditioner on your hair for five minutes, you know, you can do, but leaving it on for 30 minutes will give you twice as much conditioning power. And that's really what you want. So um, my favorites, if you're not just adding a tablespoon of honey and olive oil to your favorite conditioner, are these two. I've talked about them before. This is Curl Junkies Curl Rehab. And then we have Jesse Curl's Deep Conditioning Treatment. I have tried cheaper deep conditioners. I've tried the Shea Moisture ones. Nope, immediate buildup frizz. This one and this one have never, never let me down. So I love these, but I do have two shortcuts I can tell you about. One of them is this little guy. This is a Hothead by Thermal Hair Care. I absolutely adore this thing. It has cut my deep conditioning time in half. So when I say 30 minutes, that's 30 minutes without heat. But if you do this little guy for 15 minutes, nice and warm and toasty, 15 minutes is totally kosher. The other uh, shortcut I wanted to tell you about is maybe kind of an obvious one, but it took me a while to figure it out. I'm kind of slow like that. Um, handheld shower head. So I would wash my hair, apply my deep conditioner in the shower, and then get out and get all dried off and whatever. And then I'd have to get back in the shower after 15 or 30 minutes, however long I was, <laughs> you know, leaving it on. And I didn't want to get wet again. And so I would put off deep conditioning for a long time and I wasn't doing it regularly. And I really believe that for wavies, by the way, you probably need to deep condition 
I mean, every other week, maybe you can get away with once a month if your hair is naturally pretty moisturized, but I'd say every other week is probably the best idea for for most wavies, if you're new to Curly Girl and you have a lot of damage, you probably need to deep condition weekly, but you know, you kind of need to figure that out on your own. But basically, I didn't want to get back in the shower, and so I would put off deep conditioning because I didn't want to have to do that all over again. Once I got a handheld shower head and I could just lean my whole head, I could get out of the shower, get dressed, put on my shower cap, put on my hot head, and like walk around the house dry and happy, like I could just lean my head back into the shower and rinse it all out, apply my products and style as usual. I was a happy camper, so that made a really big difference for me. There is nothing that ruins my hair more than raking and styling products. I'm talking like running a, putting in my products and then running a Denman brush through it. Our curly sisters can like whip their curls into shape when they use a Denman brush. That gives me the stringiest, most disgusting curls I've ever seen in my entire life. And they're, they're stretched, they're elongated, they're stringy, they're crunchy. I look like I got a bad 80s perm. So if you guys have never tried smoothing in your products or using praying hands and then scrunching them in, for me, that is positively 100% the way to go. Raking them in just destroys the clumps I have. And so for me, really using water, uh, look up the super soaker method. You can Google that, you can look it up on Naturally Curly, but using the super soaker method to use lots of water to help my clumps form, and then using squish to condition to really get my products in my hair, and then applying my, my products by smoothing and scrunching is the way to go. And I will link up here um, a couple of videos that I've posted on how I apply my products. I'll uh, link a video on squish to condition, and you can check those out, and they will really show you how I apply my products every single time. And then the last, the last mistake I see Wavy's making is expecting hold from the wrong kinds of products. You've just spent all this time washing your hair, conditioning your hair, applying your products, maybe plopping your hair in a t-shirt, diffusing, and your hair is falling apart. It's it's not clumping, it's stringy, It's there's no hold, it's frizzy. By the end of the day, it's a straight frizzy mess. It's heavy, it's gross. You know why? You didn't use a gel. That is the key to happiness for me, and that is the rule I broke today. Yeah, I remember laughing when I read the Curly Girl Handbook and thought, gel? She wants me to use gel in my wet hair? Like that blue stuff that my brother used to use in high school that smelled like man? <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be doing that. I didn't know. I didn't know what was a gel and what wasn't a gel. If you're using a leave-in, a leave-in conditioner, or a custard, or a cream of some kind as your end product and you're expecting that to give you hold, sister, you are going to be so disappointed. I just want to hug you. Like this today, I, I tried a new product uh, and it was a styling lotion. Oh, I, I cannot tell you how bad I want to wash my hair. It keeps getting in my eyes. It's frizzy. There's no hold. I mean, it's not the worst it's ever been, but this, this is what happens when I make the mistake that I know is not ending my wash day routine with a gel. Okay, so I wanna know what mistakes you guys made when you first started, and ooh, you look pretty. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I wanna know what mistakes you guys made when you first started, and uh, what mistakes you find that you still make from day to day. All right, you guys have a great, great curl day. I hope this helped you out. Talk to you soon. Bye.